what's going on guys bottom tier collector here as always thank you for finding my channel thank you for subscribing viewing uh content interacting with me it's all appreciated and you're not gonna find any worse content on youtube than right here so feel good that it doesn't get any worse than this and anywhere else you go on youtube it only gets better um i have been having a conversation with one of my buddies today and this idea kind of popped in my head that i'm going to talk about at the end of the video but that also made me want to condense some more content into one video instead of having multiple videos because i think this all uh can kind of relate i think we can kind of segue into the think piece so i had a conversation with someone recently i don't want to say his name out of respect for this person but he's very active in in my little circle on youtube uh he knows who he is because he asked me this question on somebody else's channel i think pressable defects like a pressable defects comment i left i think i think he asked me a question on that comment um so essentially he was wondering what an omnibus was and uh, that kind of sparked this idea of wanting to define these terms and there's plenty of videos out there I'm sure that explain what all this is and I don't have every single format available for you but I do have several common formats for reading comic books. And hopefully we can kind of navigate that today and maybe I can help make some sense of these different formats for you. So uh, you'll have a better understanding of what you're purchasing and, and what to expect in terms of the pricing. Uh, just so you can temper expectations, I guess. So the first and most common format would be the single issue, otherwise known as a floppy issue. It's just one issue, roughly 22 to 30 something pages. Uh, and usually the whole story is not contained inside of this floppy issue. Uh, the uh, Usually it'll take four to six of these single floppy issues to make either a mini series or what's called an arc in an ongoing series or whatnot. The next uh, step up uh, would be the one shot. This is a one shot. I believe it even says it on the cover. No, it does not. I'm wrong. But this is a one shot. And a one shot is kind of self explanatory, but maybe it's not. That's why we're making this video. Um, an entire story with a beginning and an end it'll be bookended from the first page to the last page uh will be in a one shot uh now the one shot like this one this one ties into an event so it can tie in to a greater story it's not always a one-off standalone story it could tie into an event like this one ties into death metal but there are plenty of Lobo one-shots that are standalone, and Lobo's not the only character. Um, I'm just using him as an example for the video. Um, so yeah, you could have one-shots that tie into a greater overarching story, or you could have one-shots that are simply a self-contained uh, story um, that don't tie into anything else. The next step up in terms of size, which may not specifically be a step up in terms of page count. It could even be smaller than a one shot, but it is called a square bound. And a square bound, these are two square bound books. And they're called square bound because if you look, it is squared off. The binding of the pages are squared off. And this is... Both of these issues are roughly the same size as that one shot, or maybe even book for book smaller 
than that one shot. So it's not square bounds aren't always bigger than one shots. Um, it's kind of hard to, I guess, quantify is the word I'm looking for. Uh, it's kind of hard to define. That's what I'm meaning to say. It's kind of hard to define what a square bound exactly is other than the binding. Uh, it is bound in a... It is squared off at the end and the pages are glued together to the binding, the exterior uh, cover and backing. Uh, and it binds it in a, a squared off fashion. If there's anything more specific to square bounds, uh, please put that in the comments. But to my knowledge, that's all that really makes a square bound because you could have one off stories in square bounds or you could have, you know, multiple square bounds, you know, in, in, the, sa in the same arc. So it, it's really not a defined, the, the, the use, what you would use a square bound for, that's not really defined. There's also different kind different sizes and stuff. But bigger square bounds, there are still square bounds. But bigger size square bounds end up becoming trade paperbacks. This is a trade paperback. And these are also square bound. You can see they'll be glued to the binding. And trade paperbacks usually cover one art. Either a mini series or uh, here in the last 10 to 20 years, uh, writers like to write a series of four to six issues um, that is one cohesive story arc. And that is to that is with the intent to collect them later on down the road into these trade paperbacks. And there are people in the hobby that are called trade waiters. And they wait for these trade paperbacks because the idea is that the trade paperback is uh, book for book cheaper than buying the, the single floppy issues. This is actually the trade paperback for this series. Um, and it collects that whole entire series. You can see right here. It has the, the title, The Last Zarnian. Uh, let's see if we can find the cover. I don't know if they put the cover in here or not. And sometimes they'll put, like, cool notes and things, cool drawings in trade paperbacks. That's kind of a benefit of trade paperbacks is you get extra goodies and stuff. Yeah, here's some more goodies and stuff. I don't think I've ever cracked this trade paperback, to be honest. I've read the story, like, 30 times. Okay, so they did... They put the cover in here. So you can see it covers that story. And I don't think it covers... I don't think they put anything else uh, in this issue. I think it's just that story. And that is the trade paperback. The next one is going to sound a little... Uh, redundant, maybe? I don't know if redundant is the word. It's going to sound a little obvious. That is the digital issue, the digital comic book. You don't have to read it on a tablet. And I'm sorry that the light is crap. Um, I'm sorry that it's it's kind of hard to see. I don't know. Anyways, you can tell it's a Lobo issue, and then you would you know you'd flip through it. You also have guided view depending on okay guided view isn't for here maybe this is guided view okay here's guided view so when you get it's so hard to see but anyways when you get get to where there's panels on a page you you know you'd flip through it this is all one page right here and and it kind of helps you with your reading experience, it doesn't spoil anything for you. And you, you could read them on your phone if you wanted to, or your computer, tablet, 
maybe a smart TV, but I don't think smart TVs are quite there yet. Um, but that's a digital issue. And lastly, the last format I have as a ex uh, visual example is an omnibus. And that, that's where this person asked me what an omnibus was. Essentially, here's an omnibus. This is such a good story, by the way. Read DC 1 million uh, if you like DC. They're square bound. Usually, uh, they can be... This one was sewn together. I prefer when omnibus uh, sew the pages together. Uh, I just feel like sewing pages together is a little more durable and a little more flexible which I'll clarify what flexibility is in a minute. A little more flexible than when they glue the pages in, either in the omnibus or like you saw with my um, my square bounds and my trade paperbacks where they glue the pages together to that binding. Um, and you can kind of see this black part right here. I'm not exactly sure what that is, but I do know that's where the pages are sewn onto. And then... I'm not sure. Okay, so then what? everything that's sewn together, just that outside part is then uh, glued on to uh, the, the, uh, the cover. And uh, Omnibus usually try to collect the entire story. The entire one million uh, event. All... 50 to 70 issues, I don't know how many issues were in this event, are inside here. Uh, and I can read it in one night if, if I have that kind of discipline and willpower. Or, I could, you know, I could, I could uh, read it at my own leisure and stretch it out. Um, the nice thing why you would want an omnibus over any other format is that you have the entire story in one location. You don't have to go searching and digging for it. Uh, you know, some of you people out there that, that, uh, get nervous at the thought of handling your floppies, you know, you, you could beat up this omnibus and it's going to be fine. Um, and they also sometimes, I don't know why I feel like omnibus shouldn't, there shouldn't be any monetary gain from an omnibus. In my opinion, uh, I think omnibus should either maintain their value or go down in value the older they get for instance one million um this book uh the cover price is 1999 or 1999 woof 99.99 so 99 dollars 99 cents uh us dollar 112 canadian um i feel like that one million should either cost me hundred dollars or it should go down because it's a long forgotten storyline that really only DC marks would pick up and read like me uh, so that's just my feelings on the monetary gains of Omnibus however don't hate the player hate the game right so um, the way the game's going right now Omnibus do climb in value. That dadgum Carnage Omnibus that I want so bad. I I'm such a big Carnage fan, and this movie is spiking the Omnibus uh, value. So uh, you, I mean, there are monetary gains to consider when you purchase an Omnibus as well. That would that would be another reason why you would want to buy an Omnibus. And uh, but be aware if you're investing in Omnibus to flip them. If there's a reprint, because reprints come out, it's going to tank the value of your Omnibus because people can just get a cheaper reprint. So keep that in mind uh, if you're purchasing an Omnibus. So that isn't every single format. There's also the Compendium. My understanding of a Compendium is it's uh, an Omnibus, but trade paperback, like the, the paperback version of an Omnibus. However, I could be wrong. If you know more about compendiums than I do, which I'm pretty sure somebody watching this will, put it in the comments. You're also going to hear things like Absolute and Deluxe Editions. I think the Absolute Edition um, 
con is is a bigger format of the story collected in an absolute edition and, and it and it uh blows up the art and, and and the the book so it's more legible it's supposed to pop more it's supposed to look better um i'm not sure about deluxe editions i think deluxe editions just come with more goodies like uh, letters from the creator bonus art uh, i think i think that's what deluxe editions are but i'm not too sure um but they're not much different than trade paperbacks and omnibus it's just different size and it's different sizing really and so um we've covered the formats i hope you you're with me and you kind of understand the basics of different formats of comic books so I want to segue into this thought I was having. This will be a think piece. And so I was having a conversation with my friend. I'm actually having it right now. He's texting me as I film. I didn't bring this question up to him. It just kind of popped in my head. Um, and I kind of wonder if the omnibus format, now those of you that read digitally, and those of you hardcore, I only read floppy people out there. I know you're out there. This doesn't apply to you. However, it could. It could. I might could sway you here. Uh, I wonder if the omnibus format helps stories, long stories, be more enjoyable. For one, you get to hold this huge book. I think that there's something really cool about holding one book that contains an, an entire storyline that uh, spans 40 to 90 issues. I don't, I don't know what the maximum. I've not heard of many omnibus that have more than 1,500 pages. That would be somewhere around 75 issues. I, I don't know. The biggest omnibus I've heard collects about 75 issues, I think. Um, but yeah, I just wonder if that experience of, of, of having it all in one book that you get to hold and it's physical and you're flipping the pages, you get that experience of flipping the pages like you do with floppies or trades or whatever. And especially when you pick up a good omnibus that was produced very well with, with paper, that's not going to disintegrate in your hand. Uh, you know, it just there's just something about that omnibus experience. Because, for instance, I'm also trying to read Crisis on Infinite Earths in its entirety, and I'm doing it digitally. I do have the trade, but all the trade has is the the main storyline, the, the the twelve issues of Crisis on Infinite Earths. So I've taken to my DC Infinite app to read this event in, in in its entirety and what i mean by that is i'm also reading the tie-ins and i'm trying to read it in order so i can get the broad scope of the entire event and i think because um i think because i i read it i read a lot of my comics at work on my lunch break um and i don't i don't have uh, like data for that tablet. That tablet's what I read my digital comics on. Uh, I have to use Wi-Fi to be able to read my comics. The, now, the way around that is I can download my comics to the DC Infinite server that keeps my downloaded comics, and I can read it offline that way. But I feel like the process of having to go and locate each issue in DC Infinite Make sure I've got the Wi-Fi up and the internet speed to download these issues before each break. Because I don't want to sit here and download every, the entire event. We're talking like 60, 70 issues. Um, I don't want to download that all at once to, to have it all available. I, I want to pace myself and as I need the issues, I'll go and download them. Um, I feel like that is kind of cumbersome. I also feel like... Um, It's just kind of easy to, uh, like I also have to like turn on the tablet and let it upload and then I'm relying on the processor speed 
in in the um, tablet, and I'm not sure if how much RAM is involved in in displaying these comic books. But I have to rely on the component speeds to pr to provide the reading experience because sometimes I'll be flipping. And this is an older tablet. Sometimes I'll be flipping through and then I get a little bit of a lag or sometimes it'll crash and I'll have to reboot the comic. So that's kind of aggravating. Um, and I'm not arguing against digital comics here. Uh, I read digital comics. You know, I'm talking about my experience reading digital comics. But um, with the Omnibus, I have everything right there. I, you know, I, I carry it with me to work when I, and I can just... Here's the omnibus. Open it up, find the page I was at, and start reading. And then when I'm done, I close the book and put it down. With the tablet, I might want, you know, maybe I'm low on battery, so maybe I want to shut it off and put it on a charger. That's another thing. What if my battery's dead and I got to charge my tablet to read my digital comics? That's cumbersome. So I just, I'm wondering, that's the think piece here. I wonder if. The omnibus experience makes reading an event or a very long ongoing series much more enjoyable than digital. There are benefits to digital. We went over them. That, that guided view is awesome. Uh, it saves space in your house. That's, that's an awesome feature of digital comics. And it can be cheap. If cheaper if you find sales or you subscribe to a service like DC Infinite or Marvel Unlimited um, so yeah that's just something to think about uh, not saying digital comics are the devil but I'm definitely being pro omnibus here um, pro physical copy um, what do you think Put it in the comments. Do you think Omnibus are worth your time? Are they just too expensive and you would rather skip the convenience of that Omnibus in your hand and being able to just crack it open and get started? Are you willing to, to just uh, sacrifice that experience for the, the negative side of digital comics? Does it matter to you at all? Um, or are you somebody like me and you... Uh, you, you utilize every format and you don't really have a preference put that in the comments I, I'd be curious to know uh, what you guys think of digital omnibus or floppy square bound all that kind of stuff let's let's have a conversation let's interact guys as always again thank you for finding my content thank you for finding my channel subscribe unsubscribe um, anything you do is much appreciated. Till next time.